This is the Power Break Podcast number 220, titled, Turning Criticism into Motivation. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to bobbrubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. What's up with you, dude? Well, I was going to ask you, uh, this is um, kind of the, this is coming out on the 18th of uh, October. This is the time of when the colors must be spectacular there in the Asheville area of North Carolina. I, I will tell you, and it's actually kind of odd because I, I think the trees are just different at a higher altitude. I asked one of the people at my church. They live in a place called Little Switzerland, which which is much higher altitude Excuse me, than where we are. My trees have already started to change. So no. I asked her, I was like, so man, it must be beautiful up there in little Switzerland. And she's like, no, there's only one tree in my yard that started to turn red. And I was like, man, like every other tree down here is starting to turn red. So yeah, it's getting to the point to where God's going to throw some fireworks around and it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really, anybody who has not been on the Blue Ridge Parkway in fall, you are really missing out because it is the most wow. colorful and beautiful landscape you will ever see. It's just gorgeous. There you go. And that's always a, a reason to thank the Lord for those beautiful scenes he gives, right? Incredible. Yeah, it really is. Well, let's uh, thank our listeners for tuning into the Power Break podcast today. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you for uh, leaving, leaving a rating and or a review wherever you download the podcast. And thanks for telling others about the Power Break podcast. Yeah, it's so cool that our uh, listenership continues to go in the upward direction. Um, and we're just so grateful for our listeners. So, um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, but at the very least, if you could leave us a five-star review, it just helps other people find it. So we really do appreciate it. Well, JT, we're talking today about turning criticism into motivation. What comes to your mind? Have you ever done that? Oh, my gosh, (laughs) man. Are you kidding me? I I think everybody probably feels the same way. But I will tell you, as a person, our last broadcast talked about um, going that extra mile, right? Always doing that one more. You know, and I, whether I was right, wrong, You know, and I don't pride myself in it. I just believe that that's what you do if somebody's paying you to do a job. You do the very best you can, and if you can do a little more, knock it out. Right? Um, That's what honors God, and God, and that's what honors people. Well, as a person who has done that throughout their career, I'm sure it's happened to you. But constantly, after you do all this work and you really put your heart and soul into it. Somebody who comes in who most likely hasn't done a thing comes in and starts criticizing, uh, and we used to call that a visit from the good idea fairy. Every time, (laughs) (laughs) every single time you got your, you know, you got your stuff done and you were ready to go, um, you know, for me when I was a sergeant, it was always the lieutenant who half the time was probably on vacation comes rolling in with all these great ideas that I probably thought about and realized wouldn't apply or wouldn't work or wouldn't be the most appropriate way to go. Um, But yeah, you you start getting criticism for these things um, despite. And, you know, a lot of times um, I had to learn to take that criticism and I had to really be honest about whether it was good criticism or bad because it may yeah. be that God is talking through that person. Um, and that may be mm-hmm. one of those signposts that you need to pay attention to. Cause you know, I, I always say it, if you can, e- you're going to be used by God, you can either decide to be on his team or not on his team. Either way he's going to use you. So, um, <laughs> you could dedicate your life to him and he will use you and give you that life abundant that he talks about. Or you can choose to deny him, and you can end up um, being used by him, but not getting any great anything out of it. 
<laughs> for lack of a better way to put that's, it. So, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe we uh, have to understand that we uh, we all have maybe at this point are or maybe we will, but we all face criticism sometime. Either have had criticism, will have, or are having criticism right now. And it will either stop us or it can motivate us to keep going on. And, of course, uh, as JT mentioned, sometimes take the criticism as a constructive criticism that can help us, even if it's not intended that way. I like what Jeremiah did. Now, Jeremiah was criticized. I guess you would say more than criticized when he was giving a he was a prophet in uh, Jerusalem and the king didn't like what he said. So he put him in stocks. (laughs) (laughs) Ouch. And so uh, then they threw him in prison another time. Well, anyway, when he was relieved from being in stocks, he he prayed and he said, Lord, you deceived me. I was deceived. Uh, now you're stronger than I and, and you have prevailed, but I've become a laughing stock all the day and everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out. I shout violence and destruction. But the word of the Lord has become for me a, a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in. I cannot. What is he saying? He's saying, well, people were criticizing him, making fun of him, and didn't want to hear him, and being very, uh, well, harsh to him. And so he was actually complaining to God, maybe I should just quit. Okay? Instead, he realized... You know, the criticism helped him realize his original calling, and that was God had placed God's word in his heart that he had to say it. It was like a fire shut up within his bones. Wow. I just want to point out, that's what we're talking about today, that turning criticism into motivation. Sometimes that's what it happens. The fire that God has given to us um, sometimes gets covered over. But when criticism, criticism hits us, we dig down deep and we find that resource within us, the fire from God. That's called turning criticism into motivation. That's what we're talking about today. Man, that's so good. Well, let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog. Folks, if you haven't been over to BobRubaker.com, check out all the resources there. Um, there's a ton of great books uh, and the price is right. It we only charge you what it costs us to print it and send it. So um, I would encourage you to get over there. Uh, but at the very least, sign up for the blog. It'll show up every Monday, get you ready for the power break that week. So let's continue to talk more about turning criticism into motivation. Well, as I wrote in the article, just picture yourself doing what you know what you should be doing and getting criticized. What do you do? Do you just stop what you're doing or do you press on? Yeah. Now, we celebrate stories of men and women who took defeat or criticism and used the experience to motivate them to do whatever was necessary to succeed. These stories are common among athletes such as Michael Jordan, who, who happened to be told one time that he could never make it, but turn it in to prove his critics wrong. We hear of others in the business world who some, likewise took criticism or defeat and turned it into an I'll show them attitude. And much of what we celebrate these success stories, the question should be, so how do we take criticism and turn it into useful motivation to drive us to move forward? Maybe the question should be, how do we keep from being stymied by criticism? Because that's, right. that's what happens most common. Now, there are examples in the Bible of God's servants who were criticized to the point of bodily harm, as we mentioned Jeremiah. By God's grace, though, we're, Jeremiah and others were, were driven to keep going and finish strong, case in point, as we mentioned Jeremiah. But another lesson, of course, is that the Apostle Peter, he mentioned, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God at the proper time. He will exalt you in casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you. So Jeremiah was one who took the burden to the Lord, recalled why he was doing what he was doing in the first place. And it was God's word. It was like a fire in his bones. It was shut up and he had to let it out. So here's the point. Whenever we face criticism, we use the criticism to drive us to God in prayer. We lay it out before him just as Moses did when Korah and others criticized him for taking on too much in the leadership of the children of Israel. Didn't you love that story? Korah and these others 
they rose up against Moses, and Moses went into the Lord and said, you know, I didn't ask for this job. <laughs> yeah. We've all felt like I'd be that. Glad yeah. to, I'd be glad to turn it over. And so then, and then finally God judged and said, you tell Korah and everybody that's with Korah to, this, you know, to go back to their places and tell everybody else, stay away from them. And then what happened? Well, of course, God opened up the earth and <laughs> swallowed them up. <laughs> yeah, let's, so, let's, we all pray that that doesn't happen to us. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, the point is, as we looked at that article, and we want to encourage you, and we'll talk more about it through the podcast today, the criticism can move you forward in a motivation to prove your critics wrong. But even better, it can drive you to take your burden to the Lord to consider again why you're doing what you're doing, which will really help you move forward. These points we find in Jeremiah's experience and, of course, others throughout the scriptures. Check it out. The article is called Turning Criticism into Motivation. Man, that, you know, that it's so important not to get shut down by motivation, isn't it? It's so easy to get shut down by it. Um, but nobody, yeah. you know, nobody reads stories about people who accomplish great things and finds that they took their criticism and took their ball and went home. That's not how they do it. Um, <laughs> that's a good point, JT. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. just not how they do it. And if you read scripture, what you find is, man, it, most of the people who wrote or, um, well, mostly wrote the Old Testament and the New Testament, most of them really went above and beyond um, and faced a lot of criticism. Um, that's right. So They really did. So the truth is, um, you know, that's something that we need to keep in mind when somebody comes to us and criticizes us, especially nowadays, it doesn't even matter anymore what you say. I think no matter what, somebody's going to criticize you. Um, you know, I, I used to joke around all the time. I was like, oh man, you know, this guy could win a Ferrari, but he'd be like, oh, well, you know something, it's, it's not the right color. I don't really, you know, people, yeah. <laughs> people will always criticize it's just in our nature. Well, it shouldn't be in a Christian's nature, number one. Um, and we really right. need to make sure we work on that. But number two, you know, you really need to be okay with um, criticism. And there was a pastor, and this pastor said, you and I have talked about this before on the podcast. I can't remember the pastor, but what he said was, I have learned to be unoffendable. And the reason why he did that was that way he could look at the criticism and not mm -hmm. really look at the person it's coming from. Yeah. Um, and that made it to where he could file through it and, and see whether it was valid or not pretty quick because he wasn't offended by the person. He was able to look at it in a very constructive way. And I would think all of That's us good. would benefit from that. That, that's a good point, and we'll talk about that in, in the upcoming questions, I think. But anyway, that, that's a good good point, JT. And I just check out the blog, of course. It's found at BobRubaker.com. And as we mentioned, that uh, today we're talking about finding motivation from the criticism and not letting the criticism stop us but move forward. Check it out. So what's happening this week, Bob? Anything you want the listeners to know about? I thought I'd talk about the book Running to Win that I put together, kind of some winning attitudes about life in general taken from doing uh, an Ironman triathlon. So check it out. It's called Running to Win at BobRubaker.com. And while you're there, check out the sermon links of the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church in Clearwater, Florida, going through the book of First Peter these days and uh, summing up the book of First Peter later this fall. But check it out, the sermon links and the books and more at BobRubaker.com. This is the Power Break Podcast. I'm JT along with Bob Brubaker, and this is time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or for Bob, feel free to email me at jtbobbrubaker.com and we'll get to answering that question on an upcoming Power Break Podcast. Are you ready for question I know that number one? The listeners what? want to know if you're making any more apple pies. <laughs> now that's really funny. Um, I made one more and I think I've got enough apples for another one. Uh, the last one I brought to my small group, which was super cool, 
and they must have liked it because there was none left. So that worked out pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing cooler. You know, and, and it's funny because when you make something for a group of people, especially like a pie, like I'm not going to taste it. I don't want – I'm not going to bring a pie to like the small group and have a piece be missing. So – yeah, yeah. So, so you don't know what's going to happen. Man, there was a 50 50 shot. I messed that up, but it turned out pretty good. So um, I was pretty happy about it. Um, Chef JT. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I just I get lucky every once in a while in the kitchen. Works out good. Uh, so, question number one from the spiritual side of life. So, in your blog, you gave us um, help to use criticism as kind of like a driving force. Um, and you talk about us praying and considering our calling. Um, so we move forward instead of getting stalled by the criticism, but is there a place that valid criticism being used by God to change us or to change our direction in life? Like is, instead of us being stopped, we really need to look at it that way, don't we? Yeah, I really appreciate uh, there's a fellow by the name of Joel Beakey, um, and he's, he's a preacher in, in Grand Rapids, and he runs a, a book service, and, it, and it, I heard him give a, a lecture to pastors about facing criticism, and um, it does help us when we are criticized, if we step back and look at first things first, what's the most important thing? And that is, of course, learning from every situation to improve our own walk and our service to God. Well, as Joel Beakey said, it's first things first. Consider that, and that sometimes criticism will help us to get back to that. The second thing Joel Beakey mentioned was to consider the critic, who they are, their attitude, and their hurts, because many times people criticize because they're hurting in one way or another, and it just comes out in the way that they may lash out onto us. Next thing he says, consider the, the validity of the criticism, either full or in part, because no doubt, even no matter how harsh the criticism is, it's probably good in some aspect of what we have said or done. And then he said, consider your own weaknesses or your faults that could be being exposed through this criticism. And last is, of course, consider the big picture of your sanctification and your identity with Christ that is always in need of improvement. And all of us can recognize that. What say you, JT? Anything to add to that? No, I mean, that really nails it. You know, the validity of the criticism is is something that um, you have to be able to look through your emotions. Um, and, and I think learning how to do that um, is very important because oftentimes the criticism may be, you know, something that's not only valid, but something you need to hear. Um, you know, the other thing to keep in mind, you talked about a little bit is, uh, what's that old saying? Hurt people, hurt people. So hurting people, hurt people. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, A lot of times, like the people who would criticize me, um, you know, they were hurting. They didn't feel like they were getting attention or they didn't feel like they were getting credit where credit was due or, or whatever it was. So I just kind of took that with a grain of salt and looked at what they said. And it's so hard to do mm-hmm. because um, that involves respecting the other person, you know, um, and sometimes that's difficult. That's right. So, and, and as you mentioned before, just be, be determined not to be offended yourself. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that's super important. Um, so question number two from the mental aspect. Uh Let's go back to the article. How do we mentally stay in the game when we're criticized? I think looking at people who have faced criticism before. You know, that there's a scripture that says in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4 that whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that we through the endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures might have hope. Well, Stump and think about that. When we look at people from the Old Testament and the New Testament, say, say we look at Jeremiah's life and we look at him, how he was criticized, and we just look, okay, let's just put ourselves in that picture. What would we do in those circumstances? Jeremiah went back to his original call and then he was able to press forward. Right. Um, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, he begins, uh, you know, he talks about 
you know, we've talked about this, I think, in the last podcast about the Hall of Faith, you know, not the Hall of Fame, but the Hall of Faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Right. Uh, but notice how he begins in verse 32. He's, he's listed different people that have demonstrated faith in their lives. And then in verse 32, he says, what more shall I say? For time would not would fail me to men, mention Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, or of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms and forced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, and put down foreign armies to fight. And then he said, women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging. Others even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute and afflicted and mistreated. Doesn't sound like something you want to sign up for, does it? I was going to say, man, as soon as you got to saw it in half, man, I wanted to tap out. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 well, that's all. Now, but when we consider that, though, these are people that God mentions that these are people who had accomplished great things because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And no doubt you would say the criticism went uh, went forward. <laughs> it was more than criticism that caused a person to be son and two. But uh, we learn from that. And I think that's one of the reasons, one of the things we can take from the scriptures is looking at the lessons of people in the scriptures. So mentally, we can put ourselves in their place and say, uh, you know, like say Elijah or even Jeremiah, they were not, they were filled with God's spirit, the same spirit that fills us. They were called of God as we are. And when they were criticized, God saw them through, and he'll see us through, too. So it gives us an encouragement to keep pressing on. Yeah, I think it's it's really important to keep that perspective because um, you know, it's so easy to um, kind of get the poor me thing going on. The, oh, yeah, you know, look at look at what's going on with me, and this is, you know, this is not good. And you, and you kind of remain self-focused. Um, but being open to criticism really is an opening to, um, and I think that's why people have such a hard time, you know, and you get defensive. It's, it, it's, it leaves you vulnerable to a certain extent, you know, if, mm-hmm. if you got to admit yeah. you're wrong and stuff like that. But, um, you know, admitting that we're wrong <laughs> is, is, is correct. It's the right thing to do when we are wrong. And a lot of people won't do that today, so. Or admitting that we're not perfect. <laughs> well, speak for yourself because I'm pretty cl- No, forget it. I, um, yeah, you, you're absolutely oh. right. Like people just don't want to admit their flaws. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's it, it. It's OK. You know, look at Paul. Paul talked about um, the thorn in his side. He talked about the thing that he prayed to God three times to take away. And that's right. And God said to Paul, um, my power is made perfect in weakness. So, and it's interesting the people to whom he wrote that the church at Corinth they had acu- accusations. They said Paul has a weak voice, but he seems to be very strong in his writing, <laughs> and he admitted it freely. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, you know, he, he, Paul's still human. He was still human, even though God used him probably in one of the most significant ways in history. Um, but Paul's still human. And it's important for us to kind of give us that break <laughs> that we're still human too. Um, That's right. So question number three from the physical side of life. How can a person get going or keep going in a fitness program? You know, there's more starts and stops in fitness programs than probably anything else. Yeah, isn't it the fact that in yard sales, um, one of the most sold objects is our fitness quip, equipment that people buy. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Treadmills and yeah, yeah, you name it. All right. So how do you keep going when you want to quit? Uh, first of all, go for some stories of inspiration. Look at, you know, what got you inspired to, to even be uh, participate in some kind of physical activity to begin with? And those stories of inspiration, you know, athletes doing great things, and sometimes it's just the common everyday athlete finishing a marathon or doing something uh, that's important. So kind of go back to some inspiration. Read inspirational material. Second is you need this cycle of stress and rest. 
Because if you keep trying to stress, 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 you'll get stressed out. Yeah. Would you agree to that, JT? Yeah, for sure. You're going to burn yourself out or you're going to be so sore that you don't want to continue. And that's not good. And doing something that you've picked up that, and that is if you want exercise to really be meaningful, that you'll stick to it, is love what you're doing and doing not just uh, not just the outcome, but love what you're doing. I think that you really enjoy that mountain biking, don't you? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's my piece. There's so many different parts of it. But if I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. Um, and, and that's the truth. I would find something else that I loved, you know, um, in the past it was riding on the road. Um, but the mountain stuff has been nice because I have yet to almost be hit by a car, Bob. It's pretty awesome. (laughs) I go through that all the time. I know you do. Um, one one of the other things they say, if you really want to benefit your, your, your training program to benefit is give it your best, not just to get by. And the last thing is, of course, associate with others doing similar workouts who are motivated. I think that's one of the reasons why all of us kind of associated with cycling groups or whatever. That yeah. you hang around people that are, have a common interest and they seem to want to excel at doing. Sometimes it's taken to extremes, but it's also encouraging you to, you know, be healthy and work out and yeah. do your best, right? Yeah, and they talk about the things like, you know. Um, the people that I that I hang out with that ride um, are similar to the people that I hang out with that are really into music. Um, you know, we have that commonality, but we also um, learn and grow from each other. And it just keeps like mm-hmm. the passion stoked, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah, it really helps. And that, by the way, folks, is how JT and I became associated with each other to begin with. That is true. Yep, yep. It was all riding bikes. I I still can't believe you wanted to ride with me again after I knocked you over on, like, our first ride. (laughs) (laughs) It was so bad. Well... Well, folks, if you want to stick to a training program, it takes discipline. We talked about inspiration, talk about uh, stress and rest, talk about love what you're doing, not just the outcome, talked about giving it your best and associating with others doing similar workouts who are motivated. Well, it takes discipline, and discipline does make the difference in all aspects of life. Check out today's program as it, look at the show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 220. And submit your questions by email to jt at bobbrewbaker.com, and we'll get to answering those questions on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Quick quick word for Running to Win, the book that I wrote, uh, taking principles from doing triathlons to everyday life. You'll find the book at bobbrewbaker.com. Again, the name of the book is Running to Win. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast. And check out show notes, news, Bob's weekly blogs, and other cool things at BobBrewBaker.com. And we'll catch you next time on the Power Break Podcast.